All right, guys. This is chapter five, lesson five is about web managing website links. On your website, you on your website you have a lot of links, and you have to find a way uh, to making sure that you know the biggest downer on a website is when you click on a link and it's broken, it doesn't work, and you know that people leave right away when that happens. So, with that being said, um, let's see, let's see Jake's wet striped umbrella here. Dreamweaver gives you a tool called the link checker that allows you very quickly to check all the links in his personal site. The way you access the link checker, I believe, is under site running uh, reports or you actually have uh, check links site-wide. This is such a commonly used tool that is also given its own shortcut key combo. Okay, so control F8 allows you to right away check all the links. Either way, you get to the link checker. So let's take a look. Let's go to uh, check links site-wide. And right away, um, this little uh, link checker tab pops up. And it shows you, I want to drag this, this tab up here. It shows you that, hey, there are no broken links at this point. I already ran the report. Um, you can also choose to ch show different things, but let's take a look at this little play button on the left here. It says, you can actually check links on the document that you have, right now open, which I don't have any. Uh, you can check links for the entire current local site, which means looking at the, from everything that is in the root folder that has link information, and this is usually the one that you're going to be working on. Or you can check links for selected local uh, selected files in the site. So you can select different files and you can actually run this tool specifically on those locations. The only time that you use the first and the third is when you have a large website with hundreds of pages and it takes too long to create a report for everything. But for us, small sites, usually it's easier for us just to run the second option. If I click on that and it runs, it says that, hey, I checked 35 links in 11 HTML documents. There are four orphan files, and I'll explain what that is. There are 123 total links, and there's 120 that are okay. There are none that are broken, and broken are the ones that are really bad. And there are three that are external to the site. So out of 123 links, Three are external, and there are none broken. So external links are, again, links that take you take the viewer to the outside of your website. Um, if you wanted to see the results in broken link category, you have nothing. If, uh, if you're looking at external links, you can pull up a report, and uh, it's going to show you that on activities page, there are two external links. One that takes you to HTTP, Triple W, Blue Angels, blah, 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 and one to USS Alabama. Now, again, this is not going to check the external links to see if they are broken or not. It just reports that there are external links. And then, again, on the index page, there is a mail to link, which is also considered an external link. It does not, again, check whether this is a valid email address or not. It just says, hey, there's a mail to link. And that is external to your website. Orphan files is something interesting. And we have, in this case, four of them on Jake's website. What orphan files are, are files that no document links and or uses to. Remember, the HTML files are just repositories of information. And very little information actually sits on the file itself other than the text. Text sometimes even it can be imported into the page, so it may not necessarily be on HTML file location. Pictures for sure are never deposited, saved on the HTML file itself. What you all you have are links with uh, telling how how big the images are, where they're coming from, and that kind of stuff, and, and the file name. These four files that you see listed here are files that are in his root folder, Jake's root folder for the Striper and Bella site, but no HTML files actually link up to them. 
They are orphans. Nobody wants them. Um, orphan files are not necessarily a bad thing. Okay? You may actually have orphan files. You're uploading images that you're going to use later on uh, on, your, um, on your website. And you just put them on assets and say, hey, I'm going to use this file later, but my, the page that I want to put them on is not ready yet. You would generate an orphan file. Is that a bad thing to have stuff ready for when you need it? No. But, so, so why does Dreamweaver actually generate a report? Is because the concern that you're using bandwidth on your web server that you're at, on files that you're actually not using. You're wasting space as Dreamweaver sees it. Some, uh, uh, some ISPs, some internet service, service providers that host your files, they also may have a problem with the amount of orphan files you host. Because very easily, I can upload a DVD movie that I, um, that I ripped off of a DVD, store it on my web server, and use the web server hosting service to just, or the web hosting service just to store those files so I can download it anywhere I go on the world where, whenever I have access to the internet. In that way, you're actually using your web hosting server as a file sharing service. And ISPs then do have problems with that. They will actually cancel your account for that. They check for orphan files and they look at the amount of bandwidth that they are taking up, the, the, uh, the amount of space that they are taking on the, their servers. Okay? If they think you're using the web hosting for file sharing purposes, they will close your account. Okay? Because web hosting is much cheaper than file sharing. So anyways, that's basically what it is. Uh, file sharing um, does cost much more. And uh, so, so that's why they actually check for that kind of stuff as well. For us, uh, it's not a problem. The big no-no here is broken links. Let's open uh, Croach's uh, file and let's break a link on purpose. So that's not a good page to break because there are no links. Let's go to his activities page, which we know. Uh, no, the spa page actually has quite a few links. The spa page has links which are the named anchors. And by the way, the link checker, once you're not using, you can actually close it down. So I can look at my properties. I need to close the group. All right. So I'm, I'm clicking on the mas massages uh, named an uh, link that links to this name anchor here called massages. But what if I misspell massages as many of you guys do? So I'm going to add an S in the back here. Okay. What's going to happen is I'm actually breaking this link. So I'll click on enter. I change the file, and I'll, pre I'll save this, and I'll preview this on a browser, F12. Now, if I click on facials, it works. But if I click, uh, but if I click on massages, it's going to try to find the named anchor that is misspelled. And there, are, there is no mis named anchor with that name. So I click on massages, and it doesn't do anything. Okay? If I, ru if I run the link checker again... Check links site-wide. Now it's go you're going to see on the broken links report of the link checker that there is a broken link and is on this file, spa.html, and the broken link is like this. So you can actually go to this link checker window and actually correct it right there. I can go back, delete that, press, and you also have that browse for file button here. You can actually go and point to the right file if you misspelled it. I just remove the S, I press enter, and that disappears. Okay? You also see that the spa page gets a star uh, showing you that it has been edited and now it needs to be saved again. So that's how you fix one of them. Let me show you an actual, uh, la the last example here in activities page is, let me collapse this thing here. Um... Dolphin Cruises. Dolphin Cruises happens to be another link, and it links to the file cruises.html. Instead of actually breaking the link, look at what it happens when I actually uh, change the file name. 
to Tom Cruise's. Okay? Now, when I press enter, Dreamweaver is going to know that there are links linking to this, and I'm going to ask if, you if I want to update the links as I do this. But in this case, I'll say no, because I do want to break this thing, right? If you wanted to keep the integrity just by renaming the file, you'll say yes. So I'll click on enter. Dreamweaver is saying, hey, this, all these files all have links to the cruises page. And you're changing the file name. Do you want to update the links in the following files to make this and not break it? And I'll say no. Don't update. I broke it. No. This Dolphin Cruises link is not going to link up to that. And any of those files that were on the list are not going to be able to because this file name has changed. If I run the link uh, checker, it's going to show me a whole bunch of problems. It's going to show you that somewhere in the activities page, there's a link to cruises.html. Okay? I could fix that by adding that Tom and, and making the file names match, but I'm not going to do that because that's not uh, I, what I want to really do. To fix that, you can just go and make the file name and the link information match. Press enter, and I'll run this again, and now I have no broken links. Okay? Are there any questions as far as how do you manage your links on your sites? If you have broken links on your personal site, you need to fix them. Let's...